In this video, I'm going to answer the big question. How many combinations are possible using these five button simplex locks? This is going to be a math video. If you don't want to watch a math video, you can skip to the end. However, if you do that and you are confused by the answer, um, you may want to watch my video on how to set combinations with these locks. You may also want to watch the math portion of this video. One other thing, I am not a math instructor. Everything that I'm about to share with you is basically a hobby. We're going to be talking about combinatorics, the mathematics of counting and arranging. This is very introductory material. A quick word about notation. N is typically used to denote the number of objects in a set. And R is typically used to denote the number of objects chosen from that set. You will also see the variable K used that way. I want to mention a couple of rules of counting. Uh, the rule of product states that if there are m ways of arranging something and n ways of arranging something else, uh, then the number of ways of arranging both is n times n. Um, the rule of sum states that if there are m ways of arranging something and n ways of arranging something else, and if both cannot happen simultaneously, in other words, if you've got one set of choices or the other set of choices, then there are m plus n ways to arrange them. Before I start talking about combinations and solve the problem that I ultimately want to solve, I need to talk about permutations. A permutation is an ordered arrangement of distinct elements. The operative word here is ordered. With permutations, order matters. When we start talking about combinations, we will find that order does not matter. So let's solve a simple permutations problem to introduce these ideas. The Second Amendment safe has a four button keypad, N equals four, N is the set we will be selecting from. An access code must have four digits, so R equals four. R is the number we will be selecting from set N. If repetition is allowed, in other words, if the same button can be pressed more than once, how many permutations are possible? This is a simple problem. I have four digits to select for my access code. For the first one, I have my choice, one of four. For the second, I have the same choice, one of four. And I have the same choices for the other two. So four times four times four times four, or four to the fourth. And you can check this with your own calculator. You should get 256, which is far short of California's firearm safety device standards. The main thing here is that this formula here, n to the r, where n is the set um, you're choosing from, r is the number you're selecting from that set. This is the simplest and most common um, calculation you come across looking at these electronic handgun safes. So let's talk about permutations when repetition is not allowed. There's a bit more to the notation on this. You may see it written like this, P and in parentheses N comma R. You may see this or this. The basic formula is right here, N factorial over N minus R factorial. If you forget what N factorial represents, it's this. N factorial is the product of N and all of the positive integers less than n all the way down to 1. So for example, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And I could write this as 5 times 4 factorial, because 4 factorial represents all of this. I could write it as 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. 3 factorial represents all of this. The other thing to remember is that 0 factorial equals 1. We say this because uh, you can end up with 0 factorial in the denominator of a fraction expression. We can't divide by 0, so we say this equals 1. And the fact is, if you multiply a value by 1, you're not changing its value. 
Let's solve a permutations problem using our new formula. The shot lock has an eight button lock, so n equals eight. An access code must have four digits, r equals four. If repetition is not allowed, how many permutations are possible? This is kind of an interesting lock, so I'm going to draw the face of the lock. What you have is a set of eight buttons and four of the buttons are actually dummy buttons. They don't do anything. They just give your fingers feedback if you're hunting around trying to find the combination. Buried inside of this are four combination buttons labeled A, B, C, and D. They have to be entered in that order no matter how they're arranged. So R equals four and equals eight. Let's plug these in. Eight factorial over eight minus four factorial. I'll write out the numerator like this. Eight times seven times six times five times four factorial because I recognize that eight minus four is going to leave me with factors I can cancel out. And I already know that eight times seven times six times five is 1,680, which is perfectly good. It's within keeping with what California's firearm safety device standards require. Now we can start talking about combinations. A combination is an unordered arrangement of elements. The notation for uh, combinations is a little bit more uh, diverse than that of permutations. You may see uh, capital C and in parentheses N comma R or this or this. Most commonly you will see this notation N over R. This is not a fraction. This is read as N choose R. The formula is N factorial over N minus R factorial times R factorial. You may also see it with a K. R and K, as I mentioned, are uh, used interchangeably. This is also read as N choose K. In combinatorics, you're more likely to see this notation. So let's solve a combination problem. The stop box, a little plastic gadget that I looked at, has a four button lock on it, N equals four. A combination requires that only two buttons are used, pressed simultaneously, R equals two. How many combinations are possible? I think the best thing to do is to start by just eyeballing it. I will label the um, buttons A, B, C, and D. What are my options? I can press A and B together, B and C, C and D, A and C, B and D, and A and D. Six possible combinations. Now what I want to do is apply the permutations calculation and then the combinations calculation, uh, which I think will illustrate what is meant when we say that with combinations, order doesn't matter. So I will plug numbers into this. Four factorial over four minus two factorial. I'll expand the top like this because I can see right here that four minus two will leave me with factors I can cancel. And I've got 12, which is clearly wrong. That's why I eyeballed it first. What does this number 12 represent? Why is this wrong? What I've just calculated here is this top row, A, A and B, B and C, C and D, and then the next row, A and C, B and D, 
A and D, and then I also accounted for something else. This, B and A, C and B, D and C, C and A, D and B, D and A. Alternate orderings, which I don't really need to account for. If I consider myself to be pressing A and C together at the same time, that's the same thing as pressing C and A together. So let us now address this using the proper formula for choose two. Four factorial over four minus two factorial times two factorial. I'll expand the top as this because I recognize again that four minus two it's going to leave me with factors here I can cancel. And I end up with uh, 12 divided by two factorial, two times one is two, so it's 12 divided by two, and I've got the correct answer. What's working for me is this right here. This part of the formula is dividing out all the unnecessary orderings I don't need to account for. Because again, with combinations, order doesn't matter. Before I start solving this combination problem, I've set myself to solving. I need to talk about this formula a little bit more because this combinations formula will allow me to introduce um, the last tools I need to help me solve that combinations problem. This formula, uh, n choose r, is known commonly as the binomial coefficient formula and it's used in conjunction with the binomial expansion formula or binomial theorem, which is the sum from r equals zero to n of the binomial coefficient, n choose r, times a to the n minus r times b to the r. This part of the expression is telling us we can use this formula to calculate the coefficients for all of the terms that would result from multiplying out this binomial, whatever we set n to. And this part of the expression is telling us something about the exponents of a and b. Across the terms, the exponent of a will be descending, the exponent of b will be ascending. And I'm going to do one binomial expansion right now of a plus b to the fourth. So I've got four choose zero times a to the fourth plus four choose one times a cubed times b plus four choose two times a squared times b squared plus four choose three times a times b cubed plus four choose four times b to the fourth. And I've got one, two, three, four, five terms, which is what I should get because I set this to the fourth power. Had I set this to the fifth power, I would have gotten six terms and so on. Now I'm going to use this formula to solve uh, or to calculate just a couple of coefficients not all of them. I will do four choose zero first, four factorial over four minus zero factorial times zero factorial. Four minus zero is just four, so I've got four factorial times zero factorial. We've already established that equals one, so I'm left with this which equals one. And this is exactly what I should get. When you multiply out these general term binomials, the, the coefficients for the first and last terms are always equal to one. Now let's do this one. Four choose three. Four factorial over 
4 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. I'll expand the top. Um, 4 minus 3 leaves me with 1 factorial times 3 factorial, so I'm left with this. These factors cancel out, and I've got 4, which is also what I would expect. Uh, when you multiply out these general term binomials, the second terms in on the left and the right, those coefficients are equal to the um, exponent of your binomial. And we just did a math problem a moment ago where we solved this, calculated 4 choose 2, so I know this is 6. This business of the coefficients being mirror images across the midline can be summarized by stating the following. n choose k equals n choose n minus k for integers that are less than or equal to n and greater than or equal to zero. And this characteristic of the way these numbers, these coefficients distribute like this across the midline mirroring each other leads us to the tool I need to introduce that's going to make calculating these combinations of the simplex lock a lot easier. And for those of you who do math, you already know where I'm going. Pascal's triangle. What I'm doing is adding the two numbers above to get the numbers for the next row. And here's the row we just calculated. These are coefficients. I'll do one more row. And this just goes on forever. The relationship between these numbers where this plus this equals this can be summarized by the following identity. n choose k equals n minus 1 choose k minus 1 plus n minus 1 choose k. And this is an important identity, so I'll put a box around this. At this point, I have introduced all the tools I need now to solve this combination problem. This triangle can be used as kind of a cheat sheet, but I wanted to uh, introduce it and justify its use. I didn't just want to pull it out and say, here's this neat math trick we can use to solve the problem. I wanted to show that it does come from doing math that involves solving counting problems and once you've got this set of numbers, you can use these numbers to solve more counting problems, like the one we're going to solve right now. This is the complete five button simplex lock problem, all on one board. Let me tell you about what I've written here. In columns one and three, these are all of the patterns that the combinations form. It, they aren't individual combinations, just the patterns they form. And I should tell you about the notation. Vertical lines indicate separate entries. Plus signs uh, mean buttons that are pressed at the same time. So this line right here reads one, then another entry, then three at the same time. This line is one, then three at the same time, then one. And the next line is three at the same time, then one, then one. The numerical outcomes are identical. So I've drawn a bracket next to it as I have with many of these patterns. In many cases, I can just calculate one pattern, multiply it by two or three or four. And that brings me to the math. Columns two and four, this is the math. And I've already calculated all of the five button combinations and four button combinations because I don't expect anyone to want to sit through the tedium of watching me do that. I'm just going to calculate combinations involving one, two, and three buttons. So starting from the top, how many ways can I select one from five? That's five, choose one, five. Now looking at two button combinations, I can enter one button, then another, or two at the same time. If I enter a combination that's just one button, then another one, the first entry is five, choose one, which will leave me with four buttons to select from for the next entry. So that's four choose one. And I can invoke that product rule I mentioned at the very beginning of this video. 
and state that this is 5 choose 1 times 4 choose 1, or 5 times 4. 20. Now, how many ways can I select two buttons at the same time from 5? Let's cheat. Go to the line where n equals 5, start at 1, count 2, 1, 2. 10. Let's keep going. I can enter a three button combination by pressing three separate um, buttons. That would be five choose one times four choose one times three choose one, which is five times four, 20 times three, 60. Here are two combination patterns that have identical numerical outcomes. I'm just going to calculate one, multiply it by two. One button entry, then two. So that's five choose one, which leaves me with four to select two from. So that's four choose two. I know what that is already. That's six. Five times six is 30. Two times 30, 60. And then I can also enter a three button combination with three buttons at the same time. Let's cheat. Go to the line where n equals five. Start at one, count three. One, two, three, 10. That's how the rest of this went. And I hope everyone appreciates that you don't have to sit through that. So let's add it all up. I've got five plus 20 plus 10 plus 60 plus 60 plus 10, 120, 180, 30, 40, 5, 120, 240, 90, 60, 20, 10, and 1. 1,081, which means I'm halfway there, right? Because every one of these combinations can be entered such that the final entry is a half button press. So I still have to go like this, times two equals 2,162. The total number of combinations possible using the five button simplex lock is 2,162. And aren't you glad I did this so that you don't have to?